sometimes we're asked to work backwards, where we are given the zeros of a polynomial, and we want to try to work back to figure out what the original equation or the original function is. And so that's what we have in front of us here. So we've got zeros of a polynomial function that are supposedly 2, negative 1, and 5. And we want to know what polynomial function has those uh, as zeros. So what we can say is we've got this function that if 2 is a 0, then that means x minus 2 would have to be a factor of that polynomial function. If we think about this concept of working backwards, then x minus whatever is the 0 is going to be a factor of our polynomial function. Because if I was to set x minus 2 equal to 0 and then solve by adding 2 to both sides, I would get x equals 2. I would get 2 as a 0. So whatever value we know is a 0 of a polynomial function, we can write it as a factor as x minus that number. So x minus 2 is a factor. x minus negative 1 is a factor. So that makes it x plus 1. And then x minus 5 is going to be a factor as well. And so now we just need to take these factors and then multiply them to get the polynomial function in standard form. So that's just going to require two stages of FOIL. So I'm going to FOIL these first two terms here. So I'm going to have x times x gives me x squared. My outer terms, x times 1, gives me x. My inner terms, I get negative 2x. And then my outer terms, I get negative 2. And then don't forget, we still have the x minus 5 here. If I keep going then, gather my like terms, I've got x squared, and then plus x, minus 2x. Those combine to make minus x and then minus 2, and now I have to take that and multiply it by x minus 5. So I have another round of FOIL-style multiplication. So if we keep going here, x squared times x is x cubed, x squared times negative 5, negative 5x squared. And I'm going to take that negative x and multiply it times each piece. So I've got negative x times x is negative x squared, and then negative x times negative 5 becomes positive 5x. And now lastly I have to have the negative 2 from the first set of parentheses multiply everything in the second. So I've got negative 2 times x is negative 2x, and then negative 2 times negative 5 gives me positive 10. And then I have one more round of gathering like terms. So I've got x cubed as my highest exponent piece. I then have the two x squared pieces, negative 5 and then negative 1, combined to make negative 6x squared. I've got the 5x minus 2x, which gives me 3x, and then finally the plus 10. So here's a polynomial function or a polynomial equation that has 2, negative 1, and 5 as zeros. For the second example, we can approach it much the same way. So I'm going to have my polynomial function, f of x. And so now I've got these three zeros. So that means x minus 0 is a factor, or just x is a factor. Then I've got x minus negative 3 is going to be a factor. So x minus negative 3 becomes x plus 3. And then finally, the last factor will be x minus 3. So now we've got our uh, multiplying to do. Now, on the previous question, it didn't really matter which ones we multiplied first and then what we left for the second stage of the multiplication. On this one, I think it's in our best interest to go ahead and multiply these two pieces together because this is that difference of squares pattern. So I'm going to keep the x out front here, and then if I FOIL x plus 3 times x minus 3, we can get away with just multiplying the firsts. x times x gives us x squared, and then we can just multiply the lasts. 3 times negative 3 gives us minus 9. And I can skip those other two terms, the outer and inner, because they're just going to cancel out. I'm going to get a negative 3x and a positive 3x, so those are just going to cancel out when I go to gather my like terms. So sometimes it can be wise for us to choose to multiply a particular pair of factors first before multiplying by the third or fourth factor or what, anything else that we have. And so now my last step is to just distribute. So I'm going to end up with f of x equals x times x squared is x cubed, and then x times the negative 9 is a minus 9x. So here we have a polynomial function that has 0, negative 3, and positive 3 
as zeros. Now, as we saw when we were solving polynomial equations and trying to find the zeros, we don't always end up with integer values as zeros. We can end up with things like root 2 as a zero. So in this case, we're told that 3 and root 2 are zeros. So that means that if I want to find the polynomial function or the polynomial equation that has those as zeros, I'm going to approach it the same way as we did on the previous one. So I'm going to have x minus 3 as one of my factors. I'm going to have x minus root 2 as another factor. Now, these irrational zeros, like root 2, or imaginary zeros, like we see on the next one, like 4i, they always come in conjugate pairs. So that means that if root 2 is a 0, that negative root 2 is also going to be a 0. These always come in these conjugate pairs. That's the only way we're going to end up with integer coefficients, numbers in front of all of our x's, in our final answer. So even though it's not listed as being a 0, only root 2 is, by implication, negative root 2 must also be a 0. On the second example, if 4i is a 0, then that means negative 4i must also be a 0. But we'll deal with that one in a moment. So back to the first one, we've got x minus 3 as a factor, x minus root 2 as a factor, so then x minus negative root 2 or x plus root 2 is also a factor. And so here's another example of where it's in our best interest to choose wisely as to what order we multiply our factors. I definitely want to multiply the two that I have over here first because that will guarantee that I won't have any square roots left to carry through the next round of multiplication. So I'm going to continue here. I still have my x minus 3. And so now if I FOIL, again, I have kind of a difference of squares pattern here x times x multiplies to make x squared. If I just multiply my last, negative root 2 times positive root 2 is going to give me negative, and then root 2 times root 2 is root 4, which is just 2. And then my outer and inner terms cancel out. That's why I didn't really bother to include those. I get a negative root 2x, I get a positive root 2x, so those are just going to cancel, and I'm left with just x squared minus 2. So now I just have one more round of FOIL to multiply times this x minus 3. Again, very important that we multiply these two terms first and then multiply the, by the x minus 3. It just makes our uh, multiplication a lot simpler uh, than if we had decided to multiply by that x minus 3 first. But to finish things out then, I've got f of x equals. Now I'm going to multiply x times x squared. That gives me x cubed. I then have my outer term, so I've got x times negative 2 is negative 2x. My inner term is negative 3 times x squared, so negative 3x squared. And then my last, negative 3 times negative 2 gives me positive 6. And then the last thing I should do is write it in standard form, where it's going from the highest exponent downhill to the lowest. So I'm just going to reorder those middle two terms. So I've got x cubed minus 3x squared minus 2x and then plus 6. So here's a polynomial function that has 3, root 2, and then again by implication negative root 2 as zeros. And so in the last example, as I had already pointed out, we've got 4i is a 0 to go along with 1, which by implication means that negative 4i must also be a 0. They always come in these opposite positive and negative pairs. So if I write this in factor form then for a polynomial function, I'm going to have, and I'm going to start with the x minus 1 because I want to group together the two factors that are going to involve the imaginaries. Because just like on the previous question with the radicals, I've multiplied those factors first. So too I'm going to do the same thing with the ones that have imaginaries in them. So I'm going to list off that x minus 1 first. If 1 is a 0, x minus 1 is a factor. And then I'm going to have x minus 4i is a factor. And then x minus negative 4i, or x plus 4i, is a factor. So I'm definitely going to multiply those second two first. I'm going to multiply these two together first, and then I'll take the result and multiply it by the x minus 1. So I still have the x minus 1 here. 
And so now when I FOIL, I'm going to have x times x is x squared. And then my lasts are going to be negative 4i times positive 4i, which is negative 16i squared. And then those outer and inner terms are going to cancel each other out. I'm going to get a positive 4ix, I'm going to get a negative 4ix, so that's why I'm glossing over those. I don't need to worry about them. Now here, I have a little cleanup work to do before I go any farther with my FOIL. And this is the advantage of having multiplied those two terms first. So I still have my x minus 1 here. Now if you'll recall, i squared is equal to negative 1. i is the square root of negative 1, so that means that i squared is equal to negative 1. So what I really have in that uh, second set of parentheses is x squared, and then it's negative 16 times negative 1, so I'm going to get positive 16 when I clean that up. So I substitute in negative 1 for i squared, and so that turns it into a plus 16. So now all of my i's are gone. That only happens if I take these two terms and multiply them first. Now I can go ahead and multiply by the remaining x minus 1. So if we FOIL, we get x times x squared. It's going to give me x cubed. I'm going to plan ahead a little bit here. I'm going to break my typical uh, order of FOIL just so I end up with the x squared term next. So I'm going to multiply these inner terms. Negative 1 times x squared is negative x squared. Then I'm going to multiply my outer, 16 times x is 16x, and then finally negative 1 times 16 is negative 16. And so here's my polynomial function that has 4i, 1, and then of course negative 4i as zeros.